Hi peeps, my name is Zena and I'm Aging Ethically. Recently I watched Jeffree Star's video entitled, I followed my 100 year old grandma's favorite makeup tutorial. It's funny because the tutorial that he's talking about that his grandmother loves is also one of my favorite vintage tutorials to watch. I clicked it and I, it's like, it's, we're gonna play it in a minute and I'm gonna follow the entire video. It's insane, it's really funny, it's vintage, it's crazy, um, and it's insane to see how far we have evolved in the makeup community. As the video progresses, he has to use certain techniques that he's not comfortable with. Nowadays, when applying certain steps in a, in a makeup routine, we have different tools than we used to use. Basically the gist of the whole video is, you know, putting on modern makeup using vintage techniques. Now back in the 80s and 90s when we had to apply foundation, we either used our hands or we used these like triangular little foam spongy things. Nowadays we use brushes and we use uh, cosmetic blenders or beauty blenders or beauty sponges. I happen to have a beauty sponge and my foundation brush handy. Watching Jeffree Star's video really made me think about my own technique and how I apply my makeup and the fact that I used to apply my makeup, my foundation in particular, with my hands and with like these little tiny little disposable sponges. Now I'd rather not create waste by using exclusively disposable sponges again. But the more I thought about this, I realized how lazy I actually am with cleaning these applicators. For instance, and this is kind of embarrassing, this is my beauty sponge. And if you really tell, um, there's a lot of product here. This part's pretty clean because, you know, I really don't use that part. And the little pointy tip has uh, some foundation caked in it as well. Now. You know, in a perfect world, you're supposed to clean these often. You know, you dampen them every time you use them, but are you using a clean sponge each time you apply your foundation? I don't. Um, I use a dirty makeup sponge more often than not, and I'd say that I clean my brushes probably mm, once a week, maybe once every two weeks. I know, that's terrible. But here's the worst. This is my makeup brush. This is my foundation brush. This is the worst. Look how dirty this is. Oh my gosh. I really do like this brush. It's cool. But one thing I noticed with, with both this brush and these sponges is that I've forgotten what kind of results I used to get, you know, back in like the 80s and 90s when I put on foundation because I've been using these kind of things for so long. But like a brush can leave like brush strokes. And the Beauty Blender, I like it. it. It really does spread the product out, but it absorbs a lot of the product. So you lose a lot of product. And if you have like, you know, if you have some foundations, which, you know, may be a little more expensive that you use on special occasions, or maybe you use them every day, you know, a lot of that product is just getting sucked up into this sponge um, and not even making it onto your skin. So watching Jeffree Star kind of struggle with using his hands to put on foundation and concealer actually prompted me to make this video. I did a little digging around on the internet and, um, you know, as I said before, I, I don't clean my, especially my foundation brush as often as I should. And I was curious, like, obviously common sense will tell you that probably it's not just makeup on here. I mean, there's like, there are like skin cells and there are probably like bacteria that's just like camping out on this brush and also on that sponge. So I found a website, it's called ute.ie. This little article highlights some information that's provided by a Dr. Regina Kelly. She is a science educator and a Dean's postdoctoral fellow in STEM education at EPI STEM, the National Center of STEM Education, School of Education, Faculty of Education and Health Sciences, and the University of Limerick. 
Now I'm going to read part of this article to you. I'm not going to memorize this. I just want to read it to you so that I, I can actually fully express <laughs> how skeeved out I am by my, my own laziness and my, my brushes and my sponges. Unexpected acne breakout? Strange smell coming from your beauty blender? Okay, I don't think I have a strange smell. No, it just it smells like nothing. These are signs that there is bacteria buildup on your makeup applicator. Bacteria are everywhere. We have about 10 times more bacteria cells than human cells in our body. Ew. Some bacteria on your skin are good and act as defense against bad bacteria. Wiping a microbe infested sponge over your skin, however, causes an excess of bacteria that can lead to breakouts. To understand the problem, it is important to know the conditions that promote bacteria growth. Beauty blenders are the perfect breeding ground for microbes. Every time you use your beauty blender, you transfer microorganisms onto your face. Your beauty blender, as well as the makeup products you use, become a breeding ground for all your dead skin cells, dirt, and bacteria. You may not notice them, but your skin will show the effects of these bacteria, resulting in blemishes and skin infections. The conditions needed for bacteria to grow on your beauty blender are moisture, and we do wet our beauty blenders every time we use them. Bacteria love moist places, and need to multiply and survive. Most areas are particularly prone to bacterial growth. So by leaving your beauty blenders in the bathroom or by not completely drying your beauty blenders after you wash them can cause bacteria to grow. Ew. According to this article, what tips can you follow to keep the microbes on your beauty blender at bay? Wash often. The more regularly you wash your beauty blender, the less time microbes will have to reproduce. Wash your hands and face before using your beauty blender. This will reduce contamination. Never share. Your face contains its own flora of microbes. Replace foundations. Foundations with a pump should last one to two years. Okay, yeah. Foundations in pots are more exposed to microbes. Therefore, you should replace them if they are older than six months. That is the article on <laughs> microbes in your beauty blender. And, and, you know, I'm assuming it's the same in your brushes. Like, I'm sure there are skin cells and all kinds of just nasty things in this brush. And I just keep using it and applying it to my face. So I'm going to wash my hands right away because I've just been playing with these, the brush and the blender. <laughs> and I'll be right back. I'm going to go ahead and put my foundation and my concealer on today using my hands and my fingers. Sorry about the lights, guys, but this is the Derma E Vitamin C Concentrated Serum. It has hyaluronic acid, and we're gonna start off using this product on my clean and naked face. Next, I'm going to hydrate under my eyes where my skin is very thin and very dry. I'm gonna be using this K-Beauty Okay, Illuminating Serum it has vitamins B3 and again, hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid actually helps retain the moisture in your skin. Next, I'm going to be using the e.l.f. Jelly Pop Dew Primer. This is one of the tackiest, stickiest primers I've ever used and I thoroughly enjoy it. It's watermelon infused and it actually, it smells like fresh watermelon. Now, it was really entertaining and pretty hysterical to watch Jeffree Star freaking out over the notion of using his hands and his fingers to apply his foundation. Oh, she's already doing foundation. Put the foundation from the center of the face toward the hairline using gentle oh, strokes. Oh, my. Make sure it's blended evenly. Thank you. Okay, let's pause. Oh, my God. No beauty blender, no Morphe sponge, nothing, no brush, your fingers. Interesting, because this is exactly how I used to apply my foundation back in the day. Here, I'm going with the pure four-in-one Love Your Selfie Foundation. This is one of my absolute favorite foundations. I thoroughly enjoy this, and uh, this pure foundation comes in a shade range of 100 
different shades. If you go on their website, you can color match your go-to foundation with the 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Foundation without even having to swatch it, and it'll be a very, very close, if not perfect match. So here goes, I'm gonna be using my fingers. That is one pump of the 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Foundation. Just gonna warm it up. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is fun. This is bringing me back, guys. This is this is how I used to do my makeup. I'm just like trying to the best of my ability to use upward motions. As you age, you want to try to get into the habit of doing that <laughs> as much as possible. Um, I'm sure there's a science to it, <laughs> but it might be just psychological, but you just want to keep everything going in an upward motion and you never want to drag anything down. What's fun is you're warming up the product with your fingers so it really blends into your skin. And you're using clean hands every single application so you're not worrying about microbes and bacteria and dead skin cells and whatnot. My skin stopped breaking out as I've gotten older, my hormones have changed, but if you have acne prone skin, you may wanna try putting on your foundation with your hands instead of with um, a brush or a beauty sponge and see if that helps. Also, I used to have acne prone skin and it was the worst. When I was younger, my hormones were different, but when I didn't drink enough water and when I used to consume dairy, Dairy causes your skin to break out. And I don't think dermatologists talk about that as much as they should. And that's not just me pushing a vegan agenda. That's a fact. So if you doubt me and you do consume dairy, just try cutting it out and then see how your skin responds. And then remember this conversation. <laughs> okay, well I have blended out my foundation to my satisfaction and I have to say I love it it covered up my little spot here better than the brush normally does I'm going to go back in again as I usually do I have like a little sunspot right there right there and I have another one right here and they're very stubborn and at some point I may or may not get like a chemical peel to maybe get rid of those sunspots and maybe get rid of uh, some of my fine lines, but it has to be vegan and it has to be cruelty free, otherwise I won't do it. And if you know of any skin procedures like that, um, non-invasive, you know, like a chemical peel that's vegan and cruelty free, let me know down below because I'm actually looking into it now that summer's over. All right guys, I love this, I absolutely I already know I love this foundation, but I love the way using my fingers really warmed up the product and applied quite nicely. I'm not seeing not seeing any lines of demarcation. I was able to spread it enough on my neck. And plus it's a really, really good color match too. You wanna to make sure that you match your foundation quite well to your skin, <laughs> no matter what method of application. But I knew this was an absolutely perfect match for me. So I really love this. I'm really happy. This is like bringing me back. I think I may be putting on my foundation with my hands in future videos. Next, I'm going to move on to the concealer. It's kind of fun to watch Jeffree Star struggle with the notion of using his fingers to put on his concealer, mostly because he has really pointy stiletto fingernails. <laughs> she blended this out with her fingers. Like, I don't know about all that. I'm going to be using his Jeffree Star Magic Star Concealer in C6. And just like my foundation, I'm going to use my finger to apply. That looks really lovely, you guys. I love this. I love the coverage. I love the precision. I love the fact that I didn't have to go in for an extra pump of my foundation. I love the fact that my hands starting out were clean and microbe free. <laughs> 
And if you watch the whole video, it, it's really fun and I encourage you to do so. But what's interesting is, is that Jeffrey really didn't hate this part. He did, really didn't hate this process. <gasps> oh, it's not bad. Whoa, this is a really weird because we never do this on my channel. Like what, my fingers? Sometimes you just gotta dive in like the old days before all the trickery, all the brushes, everything. You just gotta go back to the old school. So I'm not, I'm not really minding this. And I've noticed other beauty influencers who use their fingers as well. I just want the tiniest bit of concealer. And what I'm even gonna do is I'm gonna use what I do on an everyday basis when I'm getting ready and going out the door. I put foundation, I add concealer, and then I just blend it out with my finger. So I do realize when doing this, how much product my beauty blender and sponges are really picking up because it's making these products look even more full coverage than I thought they were. Look at that. So the ColourPop no filter. Damn, girl. Interesting that Raw Beauty Christy mentioned that by using her fingers, she didn't use as much product. Your application is clean, it's precise, you get very nice coverage, you blend into your skin very nicely and evenly. You don't use as much product. I mean, that's a win, 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 win situation. <laughs> I will continue to use brushes to set my foundation. I will continue to use brushes to do my eyeshadow and to do my contour and whatnot. But I think I may just start putting on my foundation and my concealer with my hands from now on and see how that works. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today on this uh, foundation experiment and this trip down memory lane, if you will. <laughs> I post new videos every Monday and Friday, and I thank you so much for watching them. All right, peeps, I will see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs> you guys, my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter are all aging underscore ethically. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Thank you so much. Bye.